to the channel, everybody. It's Fraud and Roundup with Sheriff White, a moron. Want to welcome you back to my channel. Help it continue to shrink by watching my videos, sharing my videos, commenting on my videos. Turn on that notification bell and turn on all the notifications. Tick that like button, like it, dislike it. Next time it gives you a ride home, bring along a cat of Febreze and some rubber bands. Once it drops you off, right before you get out, wrap that rubber band around that trigger and throw it in the back seat. So today's two morons are these two. One on the left, the poodle man, goes by the name Craig Hendry. He's playing pretend journalist today. And on the right, it's a gay porn distributor. And I do got receipts. Goes by the channel name Flex for Freedoms. Because he ain't flexing his brain cells. This is Bo Bish. They're talking, lying, misunderstanding about an arrest Mr. Bish had before. Lots of accusations, lots of conjecture, but no receipts. It's going to be the, one of the world's dumbest interviews, so sit through it if you like. Before I start, let me just say this. I try to be a fair man. You're going to hear Mr. Flexer Freedoms claim that one of the jurors was a city councilman, John Childs. And claims that that city councilman said that he didn't want to go against the police because he's got to work with them. So I emailed Mr. Flexer Freedoms to see if he could provide a citation. And he did kindly reply. Although he must have got his files mixed up because what I got back was a video of three elderly men having an orgy. Look, Mr. Flexer Freedoms, you're probably red in the face right now. And if that's the stuff you like, I'm not here to judge you. I did email him back asking if he was the one in the middle. Got no reply yet. I'll let you know if I do. I did reach out to Councilman Childs, who did say that he never said those words. So there you go, another fraud or lying. And by the way, I saw this video on the page of a new member to the community. Goes by the channel name The Lucid Dream. I'll leave a link to her video in my description. Go check her out. She's got a solid channel. And in fact, I'll play one of her clips in this one later. So anyway, let's watch this, uh, I guess you can call it an interview, and let's round us up some frauditors. One man's vulgarity is another man's lyric. This is what the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in the case of Cohen versus California more than 50 years ago. When deciding Cohen versus California, a case in which a man was prosecuted for saying F the draft, Cohen was acquitted of his alleged crime due to his only crime being expressing his opinion. Fifty years on, you would think our government would be well aware that prosecuting people for speech alone Remember what he said, for speech alone is a violation of the Constitution and just downright petulant. Unfortunately today, we are bringing you news of a story in which a military veteran was prosecuted for using his vocal cords to produce words that an agent of the state found offensive. The video you are about to see depicts the arrest of popular YouTuber Flex Your Freedoms, arrested for interfering with a police investigation. Here is that video now. Before we watch this video, let's see what Iowa says about disturbance of the peace. Notice how it says public or private property, loud or disagreeable noise, profane, or obscene or indecent language. And again, I think the Lucid Dream did a really good job on this video. She, she kind of knows her history. Uh, she pointed out that Cohen versus California, Cohen was never acquitted. He was convicted. And it was later overturned by the Supreme Court. So Mr. Hendry is either dumb or lying. Hey, there's a search warrant being executed on this property. You need to leave the property. This is, pri this is public. Don't touch me. There's what the you doing for this property don't you touch me go don't touch me you're gonna push me in the Wait. street dump name and badge number now lieutenant gersh g37 you don't know who you're with up. boy obviously not stupid is that your badge there yeah there's a search warrant being executed here so you don't have the right to be here i'm in public you push me in the street you dumb you push me there dumb go to your house. no okay ah I know my rights, dumb. Fuck. You don't know who the fuck I am. I could care less. So leave me the fuck alone. There's a search warrant can... being executed. Why are you property? fucking touching no. me? What the fuck? Get off the property. Get out of the street. What the fuck are you doing, you dumb? Okay. Fuck. 
Go I can there. videotape. Right here. This is my property. Don't right. touch me. This is on your property. Don't touch me. Back up. You push me. Road. I'm not I'm recording. I can't Good. record I'm recording this. too. We all I can are. record. Guess what? Live stream, dumb. Great. But you don't know who the fuck I am. am. Stay over there. Come out in the street. You want to fuck? Oh, I'm in the street right now, dumb. What no you gonna shit. do, push? Nothing. Coward. Stay back. Be fine. I am dumb. Shut the fuck up. He that in public did. Your investigation's right in there, dumb. Think you can assault just innocent and bystanders that are in public? What do you want? You can stand out here and talk. I can talk all I want. First swear, Amendment right. Okay? Oh, I can't swear. swear. Are you are you ladies offended by his, his oh, body? Oh, He's fine. What he's saying? Just let me know. Yeah, you're a tyrant. Suck my. Get a rope. Okay, that's it. Yeah, you're yeah, right me, huh? Disorderly. When men are put into cages for expressing a dislike towards public officials or making poopies on the couch, it tells you a few things. First, that you are no longer free. Second, that we have become a country governed by men, not laws. And third, that you should be concerned. Concerned for your own liberty and the liberties of your children. We at the Henry Media Group think that if government is arresting somebody for using their speech alone, it is all the more important to hear what that person has to say. So we landed an interview with Flex Your Freedoms. An interesting conversation was the result. Flex, thanks for being here, brother. How you doing? Hey, doing pretty well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. And back then, I was a big, <clears throat> a big police supporter uh, because um, at the time, really, cops haven't done me dirty, you know, so I didn't have uh, bad experiences with them. And then I always thought, you know, things would be all right if people just complied because you hear that a lot. Just comply with the cops. You'll be fine. Comply, comply. So I had right. that belief going on. And while I was up at the airport, uh, my security partner he used to always play these, what is known as the First Amendment audit videos. <laughs> well, I started watching them, and at first I, I was like, what the hell? They're kind of just antagonizing police, you know? Like, what is this all about? But then I started to realize, you know what? They're just standing up for their rights, and rights cannot be messed with whatsoever. Oh, yes, they can. Yes, they can, and yes, they do all the time. This is what it sounds like when someone becomes indoctrinated. And then I just started watching more and more, and I noticed that the rights weren't being taken seriously whatsoever. They're getting trampled on left and right. I want to thank you kindly for fighting for these cherished, sacred rights. Like the right to go tell a cop to suck your d right in front of those women and children. I thank you kindly for your service, sir. Um, and I ended up leaving that job after, uh, you know, the COVID shit happened. And, um, I, on my 30th birthday and right before it, I just started watching more of these videos and I was like, you know, that's a cool, very interesting way to stand up for your rights. And I needed to do something because I seen how corrupt our government actually is. And, um, you know, uh, from my friends that have died, I've, many of them just pass away. Uh, either they took their own life or got you know, killed in war. And I knew that we all swore an oath to the constitution. Maybe not at the time we didn't really take it too seriously because we all thought we were fighting for the land of the free. We all thought that we all thought America was the place to be. I cannot wait to get back home. But then once he got home, he found out not really many people give, gave a shit that we were over there fighting. Um, and you know, after dealing with the PTSD and everything you get from war, um, he just found out that America is really not the land of the free at all. Mr. Reporter Man, I'm not here to tell you how to do your job, but this would be a good spot to ask why this is not the land of the free. And Mr. Flick, sir, if you truly want to go to the land of the free, you're free to move down to the Amazon jungle. You get all the freedom you want down there. Um, so I wanted to do something once my 30th birthday hit, I was big, big time watching Amagansett Press. 
Uh, he was one of the, my go-tos when I started. Then there was Auditing America. I was watching uh, that nerd, even though his were questionable. But at the same time, I understood that, hey, you know, this guy, uh, he might go about it a little bit different, but he's he's in the right. How many times have we seen these fraud editors kicked out of the uh, DMV, the sheriff's office, the library? And you'd think if they were truly in the right, they'd have won millions of dollars by having their quote-unquote civil rights violated. Or how many times have they gone back and seen that they actually made change in the policy because of them? Never happened. This would be my second arrest, even though I was just in an intake for arrest like six months prior to that, only for maybe six hours or so. Okay. But, um, yeah, I was just out there videotaping my neighbor uh, who, who had about 15 cops on him. Um, and I had to grab the camera and just, you know, start videotaping from a public spot 50 feet or so away. And, um, yeah, once I ended up getting arrested, once I knew that I'm going to go to jail, I just hit the stop on there so he couldn't have access to my phone um, and tried to either delete footage or whatnot because that's a big thing they will try to do. Um, luckily, I did have live stream capabilities and uh, it was uploaded anyway. But yeah, I just hit the, I just killed that video off. So understood. We have it on record. Uh, that particular day, I believe that I had eight hours that I was stuck in there. Um, luckily for me, I had some friends, Illinois Tyrant Patrol or Illinois Tyrant News and Dangerous Liberty that came all the way up from Illinois. Uh, they watched the live stream and they came up and bailed me right out after about um, eight wow. hours or so. And, and it's miserable because at the time uh, it was hot outside, but I was sweating so bad in the, uh, outside that once you go inside a freezing cold cell and you have that much sweat on you, it gets double as cold. And they they put you in cells that are maybe 50 degrees in there, which doesn't sound too bad. But when you're in there for eight hours, no blanket and just a wet T-shirt. Oh, it, it's like a little torture. And um, yeah, that was miserable. Oh, my God. Are you telling me they gave you a jail cell and not a suite at the Ritz Carlton? I don't know. To me, it sounds like jail's not a place you want to go. Can I ask you, do you know the name of the prosecuting attorney in your case, in the case that we're discussing here? Um, I have the name on my video. I cannot remember who exactly it is right now off the top of my head. You know, I think a renowned journalist such as yourself could have easily looked that up before the interview. And why are you trying to throw his name out there anyway? What in the world are you trying to get your followers to do? Hmm. But I know it's in the video. I put uh, his name up there at some point when I put his picture. Yeah. Can I just ask your personal thoughts on that? Well, I guess it would really be your professional thoughts on on this guy, this guy who took an oath to uphold the Constitution and then actively tried to prosecute you for using your your vocal cords. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when the thing, when the arrest happened, uh, you know, the next day I ended up watching it, reading through the comments and everyone's like, dude, you'll be just fine. They're going to drop charges. You don't have anything to worry about it. They always drop charges. Well, that was not the case, not the case at all, because when they don't like you, it, what, if you're standing up for your rights or whatever, they're going to go at you no matter what they, and I found out the hard way that um, it seems to be about 95% of either police officers, judges, DAs, whatever they may be, politicians, they don't know jack about the oath they all swore. Did you just say about 95% of police, judges, DAs don't know anything about the oath they swore to? Well, I just got one thing to say to that. Bitch, please! Today's Fraud and Around the Bitch Please is brought to you by Fannies. Ladies, there just ain't no two ways about it. Man, love them some Fannies. So next time you want to give your gent something to squeeze, don't offer your elbow, your knee, or the top of your head. Offer them the fanny. Fannies. Compromise elsewhere. So 95% of them don't know the oath they swore to. Bitch, please. Most of them got at least seven years schooling before they can get their degree and practice law. 
And you think they don't understand the simplest concept about freedom of speech and disturbing the peace. Bitch, please. They love the power. They're going to just violate it anyway. It's All it is is a little ceremony of nothingness. So, um, yeah, once he ended up pursuing the charges, I was like, wow, really? Okay. Um, well, we're going to have to fight this one off. And I was pretty confident that it should be a breeze. Well, you know, it did not turn out to be that whatsoever. I had so many things stacked against me that made it so unfair. Yeah, I kind of like you filming your own uh, crimes. That'll come back to haunt you sometimes. And, you know, it's it's one of those battles that you could be right by the law. It could be your right. It, but at the same time, it really doesn't matter because they can manipulate the law any way they please to fit their narrative and to make you lose. They could fill the jury with whoever they want, whether they go to have hold blue line rallies or something and have people sign in. It's a great way to get the perfect jury pool right there. Oh, dear God. Anybody who knows how jury selection works, it's got to be pulling their hair out right about now. And Mr. Redbeard's audience, I'm sure they got plenty of experience in the legal system. Um, I believe that is that happened with me, and I know it's happened to other people that they just want to silence. That sounds that sounds almost scary to me that oh, that yeah. that they can do that in an American court in today's age. But of course they can do it, right? They can do whatever they want. So did did the prosecutor in your case? Did he try to bargain with you? Did he try to get you to compromise with him in order to maybe? get the charges dropped or lessen the charges? What was that like? Yeah, did the prosecutor offer to drop the charges? Did he offer to buy you a steak? Did he offer you a shoulder rub? Did he offer? My next question for you is, can you elaborate on that jury trial? Can you tell me a little bit of the highlights, maybe what the prosecutor's argument was, what your attorney's argument was, and then, uh, you know, the jury's yeah. decision after that? Yeah, so... I, I noticed quickly that the jury pool that we had to select from, we asked some basic questions from, you know, raise your hand if you are uh, friends with police officers. That was the first thing we uh, said with well over two thirds of the jury raising their hand. Alex, I'll take things that never happened for 200. So we're like, oh, shit, you know, um, we're at a bit of a disadvantage here. And then we asked. Raise your hands if you're personal friends with these very police officers that work in Waterloo. And many of them raised their hand. A city with a population of 66,000. Honestly, expect us to swallow that. Come on. Um, so you, you only have, you can't pick your jury when you do it, but you can eliminate some people from the jury selection. Um, so we were trying to just eliminate as many bootlickers as we could. But when your whole jury, for the most part, is filled with bootlickers, you don't have much of a chance anyway. Uh, there was a city councilman. And by the way, my, my neighbor was black. Okay. So uh, we live in like uh, kind of the, the hood part of Waterloo where a bunch of stuff goes on. And uh, we figured, you know, if this um, city councilman... Um, you know, we thought he would be for the people, you know, because he was elected by him. He, it turns out that was completely wrong. Please cite your source. And please, dear God, no more pictures of three men having an orgy. Uh, the jury, we ended up having a jury pool of six. We only could eliminate so much. And one was a city councilman. Uh, we couldn't eliminate him. We didn't have any more left. Uh, so he was on there. Um, and we thought, you know what? I believe we have a chance that he'll do the right thing. Well, until we heard him say, uh, I will be hesitant to side against the police because I work with them. And so that was like, oh shit, you know, like, uh, well, this is already not turning out too hot. Um, and so we ended up going to do that. We found that, um, you know, the judge, every time the prosecutor wanted to um, say, hey, uh, bring up, I forget the word for it, um, uh, what's that word that you say that, um, like when you're object? Okay. Yes, sir. -y. A man who claims judges, prosecutors, 95% of them don't know the constitution. 
from a man who can barely remember the word object. And ultimately, that's how I got arrested was for my speech after um, I called one of the cops. Uh, he tried soliciting a disorderly conduct against me and everybody around me is like, no, his language is fine. And I was like, and I was like, yeah, you're a tyrant. Suck my dick. And then he arrested me, he said, all right, you're under arrest. Tried to get me for disorderly. They knew that would fail. They changed it to interference and they manipulated their way for the physical act that happened when I got pushed. I'm gonna let the lucid dream take this one. And by the way, visit her channel and subscribe. She's got a great channel. You mean like when you physically came back on the property uh, that you were told to leave? So when you physically walked back onto the property, you were told to leave? That you were given a lawful order to leave because they were executing a search warrant and arresting your neighbor for sexual abuse? They told you to go home. So when you physically put your teeny tiny little feet in front of each other and walked your happy ass back over to where you weren't supposed to be, uh, that that is, is a physical act. You physically did that. Dumbass. So I didn't cause it. They did it to me. Um, and it was just, just a shit show, really. So, and so let me get this there. straight. The, the, statute that you were charged with the interfering statute requires a physical element yep look here's a statute they're talking about i may not be some fancy big city lawyer but i don't see anything in there about being physical and i'll leave a link to this in the description can i ask you in iowa are the are court proceedings recorded and are those recordings public records it's called a transcript, dumbass. So the uh, our trial was um, audio recorded only, no video. So okay. I'm going to, I still have to pull that audio from them, and then I'll obtain that. Um, and I'm just going to go and end it right there. These two knuckleheads just keep going on and on, talking about corruption, tainted juries, even blackmail. But of course, they ain't got no receipts. But might as well just throw it out there anyway, right? So there you have it folks, your government will ask you to lay your life on the line like they did with Bo from the Flex Your Freedoms channel. Well, I can tell by that sundial it's time to say goodnight. Put a little beans on the fire, a little bourbon and coke on ice. What's that? What's that Clementine? RC, that's it? Alright, I guess a little bourbon and RC on ice. And as always, cuddle up with a clean shirt and a dirty woman. I bid you adieu.